Hello, my kids. I have a feeling that I should tell you about the spiritual books that I am reading right now. And maybe they'll help other people out there as well. But my New Year's resolution of reading less and studying French more is not going great. But at least the books I'm reading are spiritual books. Uh, and maybe that makes it better. I don't know. But... The one that's really been moving has been Bruno's De Magia because this has the 30 statues in it. And I started work on my memory palace a couple months ago and being able to see how he built his, I've read a couple of the statues now, is just so inspiring. He has these visual pictures in his head that get you 10 to 20 ideas about what this spirit represents, Saturn or Apollo or, you know, it has a lot. This is a fantastic book. I really appreciate how much it's helped. Um, I'm also slowly going through Mead's uh, version of the Thrice Great Hermes. This was from Uncle Buck's library, so it's three books like this. This is just all intro. Then the second book is the main text, and the third is all the fragments from that he gathered from all the other references scattered across the ancient world. But um, Mead is a true believer, I think a theosophist, so you can't always trust exactly what he's saying, but uh, he's also very thorough in his footnotes. And so this is just, I'm so glad that... I got this from Uncle Buck. This was the one I was reading last night that almost, I don't know, it, she just moves me so much. Uh, Maya Darren, Divine Horseman, the Living Gods of Haiti. So this is about Voodoo. But not only is the forward by Joseph Campbell himself, Joseph Campbell started an ethnography religion series and he chose this to be the very first one. And he sung the prizes because Maya Darren, she wasn't just... She, she was a dancer and an artist and a photographer. She went down to make uh, videos of the dances and the possession trances of, Haiti, of Haitian Rudun. Um, and she realized you couldn't do that without explaining what was going on. So this is just a book about the ideas. But it's so poetic and deeply spiritual. It's so much less than an ethnography as a embodiment of the ideas of uh, religion and so much respect for it. It's just, it's one of the coolest nonfiction things I've ever seen about religion. And, you know, this is a topic that's close to my heart. So just a magnificent work. Um, and what a historical hottie, too. I'm trying not to let that influence me, but, you know. Um, then the... Uh, this was also from Uncle Buck, but it's Thomas Taylor, who was really renowned as like an, a translator from the 19th century. Um, and this is his version of uh, Iam Blixus's uh, Life of Pythagoras. And so he was, I think he was second century, uh, but he was one of the key Neoplatonists. And so this Life of Pythagoras was hugely influential for later thinking of the Pythagorean realm, especially for the uh, transcendentalist of New England. And so it's really nice to just read something that's... Um, like a really important early book, but is really, really readable. Like this is, you know, he's living thousands of years after, or a thousand years maybe, after Pythagoras. Um, and so it's his summary, and it's still a thousand years before us. Uh, there's something really great about it. Um, also, this I'm trying to work through um, and try to like do the practice. Uh, Mantak Chia just seems like a great healer. And this is his using Taoism um, and internal alchemy to... Um, enrich your life and your body. And I know I need to do that because I spent a lot of time reading and not enough time implementing. I definitely feel like a butterfly who hops from flower to flower but never spends any time in one, which, you know, has its advantages and disadvantages. But that makes me think of this book, uh, which I just started, and it's lovely. Seven Taoist Masters, a folk novel of China. So this is from the 1500s. And it is a novel about a person who became a master and then was told by the Eternals to take seven disciples so that they can spread the Tao throughout the world. And this was a fairly common thing to do at this time was to use novels to get across Taoist ideas. So instead of reading just precept, 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 it was seeing it in a real life thing. Um, and I think there are parallels to, to ways that spirituality can be explained today. And this is just wonderful and a lot of fun. Uh, the main teacher, he was visited by two Eternals. He was nice to two uh, young men who were beggars, who everyone else was saying, no, we're not going to give you money. You're young enough to work. And he just said, I'll help anybody. Um, and he realized that they were Eternals. They were one of the eight Eternals of China, uh, gods, immortals. And... 
So they gave him the secret to inner alchemy, but he never had time to practice it. So what he finally did was fake <laughs> insanity for 14 years um, while he practices himself. And, you know, there is the idea of is that good that he just left his wife and children and retreated inside his own home, just like the Buddha abandoned his family. Um, but it allowed him to become a master and then spread the Tao. So perhaps in the grand scheme of things, in, in the midst of all the reincarnations of life, you know, that one time made sense in that uh, instance. But in any case, this is a phenomenal book, and I am having a lot of fun with it. And so those are the spiritual books that I am working through right now. Um, that, and I realized I didn't read all of um, the Wilhelm version of the I Ching. So going back to that. So that's what I'm up to, my kids.